fresh. <coughs> In this third lecture, we will do the recapitulation from EHB 2. Okay. So what we have already covered in EHB 2, I'll just try to uh, recall it. Up Kumar. We will talk about the third lecture of UHV 3. So basically we are recapitulating UHV 2 and I think by now all of us are aware what is UHV 1, what is UHV 2. So basically when we are conducting the workshops, so we call it UHV intro. So that is the introductory workshop. UHV 1 is basically for the SIP. UHV 2 is the course that we offer in the second year. So all of us have gone through UHV 2 and we'll try to look at the content of UHV2. So we'll talk about the basic human aspiration and its fulfillment. So I think by now we are clear about this. So if I ask you what is the basic human aspiration, what will you say? <laughs> yes, so yeah. And what is the program for its fulfillment that we have talked about in UHV2? Okay, nice. So the foundation course in Universal Human Values UHV2 is a prerequisite for this course. Therefore, before we proceed, let us recall some of the basic concepts relating to the certain basic realities that we explored in UHV2 course and which are going to be used and further developed in this course. So now if you try to recall all that we discussed, these are the points that we have discussed. So if you remember, there were five modules. Okay. So in the first module, we talked about the basic guideline, content, process, need for value education, isn't it? So what is the need for value education? What are the basic guidelines? So can we recall what are the basic guidelines? Universal, Universal. 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 Yes, <laughs> nice. So basic guide and these basic guidelines are very important. See, if you are clear about the basic guidelines, so this is just one proposal that is coming to you, you might get several other proposals. Now whether this proposal is fit to evaluate, fit to verify or not, you can evaluate by the basic guidelines. If something is being said to you which is not universal, isn't it? Then at the very outset we can decide that this is not something that I am going to verify also because this is not universal. Isn't it? So it cannot be validated in living also. The next thing that we found was that the natural acceptance is there in each one of us. And this is an innate faculty on the basis of which I am very you know, naturally able to evaluate any proposal. So you will see that like uh, when you go through the UHV 2 workshop, even in the introductory workshop, we become aware of one very strong thing in each one of us and that is the natural acceptance on the basis of which I can decide what is right, what is wrong, what is true, what is untrue, isn't it? What can be real, what cannot be real. So for that I do not have to depend on any external source but rather within me there is some faculty innate to me on the basis of which I can decide the things. So that is another takeaway from the course and it is innate and different from any acceptance or conditioning. I will also say that it does take time for each one of us to distinguish between natural acceptance and acceptance, isn't it? So gradually, in fact, when we begin, then we assume that yes, the natural acceptance part is clear to us. But as we go to live accordingly and validate, so many questions arise you know, where we start questioning whether this is my acceptance or my natural acceptance, isn't it? Then the basic human aspiration is continuity of happiness and prosperity. So when we talked about this thing in which we too, we said that we also need prosperity. And here what we are saying is that the feeling of prosperity is a part of feeling of happiness. So this is also another important takeaway. In fact, when I ask my students who have gone through HV2 course, what you remember in the fourth year, you studied this in the second year. Then many of them have said that one thing became clear to us that I basically want to be happy. Maybe in the due course of time you know, with so many things coming up in life, we get engrossed you know, in sub goals, many sub goals. I have to become a professor by this age, I have to become you know, 
a director by research i have to become an is officer as i graduate i have to publish so many papers right i have to get a house of my own we have so many desires plans goals and many times we do forget that i basically aspire to be happy so if that is also something which is running in my mind all the time that whatever i am doing is essentially to be happy isn't it and another take away from here if you look at it is that if at any stage of life i am doing something unethical isn't it i have fear of that doing something unethical and that fear is going to make me unhappy so if at any stage of your life you have to decide in ethical and unethical and you are very clear that if i do something unethical and uh, this is going to harp upon me any time in future and that is going to disturb me that is going to bring unhappiness to me i will not do that if i am very much clear that i basically aspire to be happy and this is going to make me unhappy for sure why will i do that so it has a very deep impact if you look at the ethical conduct of a human being if i am very clear that whatever i am doing i am doing to be happy and not to be unhappy i basically do not aspire for physical facility i basically do not aspire for name and fame i aspire for happiness and what i am doing is not going to ensure happiness so i will not do that is that true so if you try to look at it it has a very deep kind of meaning similarly prosperity is something that i aspire for and not physical facility or money or wealth you know i want the feeling of prosperity isn't it and we have explored a lot about this and prosperity and possession of wealth are two different things how much i possess does not determine whether i feel prosperous or not it is the difference between the need for physical facility that i assess and the availability that i have if the availability is more than what i assess as need i feel prosperous else i do not feel prosperous then we also saw that there are three basic requirements for each one of us to lead a happy and prosperous life right understanding relationship and physical facility i think this also gets somewhat imprinted you know in our imagination <laughs> that there are three things which are required physical facility comes as a third priority relationship holds a higher priority and basically both of these are going to be met with you know fulfillment only with right understanding so i require three things and this is something like many people do ask that if i have to present about uhv in half an hour what should i say then you present this content right understanding relationship and physical facility it is something that can be presented in 3 minutes 30 minutes 3 hours 3 days 30 days you know <laughs> depends how much you go you are going to expand isn't it so the correct priority gets clear to us then we are able to understand that happiness is to be in harmony so if i ask you ki is happiness the same for all yes if i am able to see that happiness is to be in harmony then only i can say this otherwise a common notion is that everybody has his or her own notion of happiness so how can everybody you know have the same meaning of happiness so yes this is one common notion and you can see like the responses that we are getting right now so many assumptions or preconditionings have been done away with and we have been able to dispel all those kinds of wrong notions so happiness is to be in harmony and prosperity is a feeling of having or producing more than required physical facilities then about human being we are able to make out that human being is not merely the body human being is coexistence of self and body so there is one entity self and there is another entity body is that clear yes. so i have noted down the key takeaways from uhv2 then there are three sources of imagination in the self and the program to ensure self organization over enslavement so what are the three sources sensation natural acceptance yes now we are able to make out in fact doing the exercise 1 and 2 as well as doing and <laughs> are conducting sessions or uh, attending the meetings these three sources become ample clear to us now this is something which is a sensation and it is not going to ensure happiness in continuity there is also going to be some dependence outside this is something which is a preconditioning 
and I, how do I verify whether it is preconditioning or right understanding? How do I verify whether something is preconditioning or right understanding? Yeah, so if it is naturally acceptable, then it can be right understanding, isn't it? I will explore further to find out. But if something is not naturally acceptable, certainly it is a preconditioning. Then responsibility of self toward the body and we are able to see the body as an instrument. So the more clarity we have of the coexistence of self and body, we are also able to see that body is my instrument. And somewhat it does appear to us that then since self is continuous and body is temporary, then self is central to human existence. This is one natural conclusion that we are also able to draw in UHV2. We are further reinstating the same thing in UHV3. Now with that, I am able to be responsible to my body. So can anybody list out the program for self-regulation, if you remember? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So there are four parts, no? Yeah, so intake and daily routine, then labor and exercise, then postures for regulating body and breathing, medicine and treatment. Yes, nice. <laughs> nice. And for myself, I have found that these four parts of the program do appeal very seriously to me. So if I have to take care of my health, I start from intake. Whether my intake is proper or not, whether my upkeep of the body is you know, okay or not, how many steps I am walking in a day. So if you start from there, you, feel, you will find that you are able to make your body healthy naturally. Now, there are lots of information over YouTube, media, where you gather information about health. But you'll find that ultimately, if I'm not able to ensure this in proper sequence, my health of the body is not going to be ensured. Then we talked about relationship. Now here also we saw that relationship holds a prior, uh, higher priority and we are able to see the role of feeling in the relationship. And these feelings are to be stated in the self, not to be borrowed from the other, isn't it? So when we go to fulfill any relationship, the feeling is the primary thing. Because many times, whenever we also feel that, yes, I have to fulfill relationship, we go into the expression part, the fulfillment part. Now, we may try to appease the other by fulfilling the preconditioning of the other, fulfilling the desires of the other. And in that process, we get tired. We feel fagged up because we are trying to do so many things to fulfill the relationship, but the other person is not getting fulfilled. Why is that happening? That is happening because I am not clear about the feeling. So when you talk about relationship also, the essence is the feeling part. So I am able to shift my attention from fulfillment to the feeling part. If the feeling is ensured, then only it can be fulfilling. If the feeling is not ensured, it may or may not be fulfilling. It is something temporary. Also, one important takeaway is that if the feeling is ensured in me, and if the other person is not getting fulfilled at that moment, I do not get disturbed. Because I can see the feeling in me, and then I help the other to evaluate me rightly. If I try to decide you know, my state of happiness by the response or reaction of the other in terms of fulfillment, then I am enslaved. Because every time I am depending on the reaction response of the other to decide for myself whether I have done the right thing or wrong thing. But if I am able to contemplate on the right feeling in me, then I feel happy within. And then I am able to also see you know, where the other is lacking in competence, isn't it? So now when we start a discussion about feeling, we are able to see that trust is the foundation and the intention of every human being is pure. Only the competence has to be built up. It is for, the me as well as, for me as well as the other. The same thing holds true. I am also developing my competence. And it also appeals very rationally because I can see for myself when we are talking about the imagination that I am enslaved by preconditioning and sensation. And that's how I am not happy naturally within. The same thing holds true for the other also. So essentially, I have to develop my competence and I have to help develop the competence in the other. So that becomes the foundation. And we can see that we all, through our sharing also, we can see, have been able to develop our relationships you know, with the feeling of trust by distinguishing between intention and competence. Then we are able to see the complete meaning of respect as right evaluation. So the other is similar to me. And in three dimensions. What are those three dimensions? 
Every other person is similar to me. Purpose, program and potential. <laughs> yeah. There also, in fact, if you are able to see this clearly, you are able to respond to so many queries in life. Even if I am able to see the intention of the other, that okay, you know, it appeals to me that yes, the intention is pure. But I am explaining so many times to the other and other is not able to understand. Where am I going wrong? Or is it so that the other person cannot understand? Or is it so that the other person cannot understand this way? I have to adopt some other way. But if I am clear about the program and potential also, then that assurance is there in me all the time. That if I understand by self-exploration, the other will also understand by self-exploration. It's only that I may not be the mentor of the other. Isn't it? Then we get the complete meaning of respect. You know, where we are able to also see that differentiation is disrespect. And each one of us is complementary to each other. Now, as a human being, we are able to see our relationship in terms of complementariness. Each one of us essentially is trying to complement each other in terms of development of the self. That is fulfilling the relationship. This is the program that we have to make with each one of us, with our you know, spouse, with our child, with our neighbor, with our in-laws, that we just have to complement each other in development of the self. And that is fulfilling the relationship. And that is the meaning of respect, yes. Yeah, so, in terms of developing the competence. So if I'm behaving with my child, whatever words are used, are meant to develop the competence, right understanding in the child. Similarly, the words that I use with my spouse are meant to develop right understanding in my spouse. So I can evaluate every time. You know. The other person may not get fulfilled at that moment, moment of time, but I'm able to see whether my you know, purpose was to develop the competence of the other. Okay. The desire that I had was to develop the competence in the other or it was with some opposition to subdue the other, to oppose the other, you know, to dominate over the other. What was my desire? If my desire was to complement the other, I am okay. I have done my part. You know? Now I have to further enrich it. But if my role was not to develop the competence, it was to dominate over the other or put the other down you know, or something else, then my role has not been correct. Even if the issue got resolved, but I have not done the right thing. And that will not ensure justice in the relationship. That will ensure, not ensure happiness in me also. Isn't it? Then we are able to get the true meaning of love. Now, love is a commonly misunderstood word and we are able to see that in the young age, how children you know, mistake this word for in terms of infatuation or you know, something else. So, starting from trust, we are able to see our relationship, our expanse of relationship. Now, you just see like earlier, we assumed our family to be spouse and children, at the most our parents and in-laws, isn't it? Now we are able to see our relationship with so many people. It's not only with those who are sitting here, in your department also, now you are able to feel related. The job is not merely for earning money, but it is also to fulfill the relationship with your colleagues, with the students, with the superiors, with the subordinates. So that feeling, the relationship you know, grows. Then another important thing, like for example, we have elections happening today, so many you know, propaganda going on, this or that. Now a common question is, can there ever be harmony in the society? Can we have a common vision of a developed society? Now this is something that occupies your imagination a lot. You can see so many debates taking place. Now you just ask them, what kind of society do you want? Nobody is clear. They will just say that it should be free of corruption, it should be free of this, it should be free of that. But essentially, what do I aspire for? <clears throat> do I have a clear vision of you know, the society that I, wa I want to be in? So we get a clear vision here when we talk about the four common human goals in the society. And what are those four common goals, if you remember? Yes. Yes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Then we talk about the nature, yeah, to, full, to fulfill the four common goals, we have the five dimensions. Yes, we'll talk about it. Then we are also able to understand the nature. Like if you look at nature, it is a collection of so many things, but we are able to classif classify them into four orders. 
and there also the understanding of the consciousness and material is very important that's how we are able to distinguish between animals and plants this is one important key takeaway you know if you look at the courses in biology medicine there also the distinction is not clear how plants are different from animals but here we are able to distinguish between plants and animals looking at the key takeaways of uhv2 and we went through all the points i hope you recollect that now we'll go further pointer able to internalize all these points in you have you been able to take away these points in your life <laughs> let's try to find out whatever i am doing am i able to see that it's not only the body but a self and a body coexisting together so we have to be observant about all these points so i have to go over few more things briefly so i'll not elaborate much over this so the topics covered in uhv fdp and uhv course so we have come across this word natural acceptance and you can see the more i explore it i become more and more aware of it earlier this just came as a word to me and now i am able to see the meaning also and we can also see that by referring to the natural acceptance we are able to resolve all the issues within me just by asking myself what do i want and distinguishing between my desire and my natural acceptance i am able to see the solution i am able to see the reality in fact when you refer to the natural acceptance you have to be able to distinguish between natural acceptance and acceptance we have multiple acceptances that we might have derived borrowed you know or loaded upon from outside but whether it is my natural acceptance or not is something to be made out now that might have become a part of my desires also and i take it as natural yes this is it a common saying is that i have got one life and i have to enjoy it what is wrong with it from where maybe from my parents inheritance that yeah way. so like one source could be my parents another could be my teachers then my friends my surroundings i might have read some book i have listened to some motivational speaker i have listened to some audio watch some video so many sources could be there so when i say inherited it means it has come from the lineage but not necessarily ancestors yeah ancestors but it could have multiple sources you can just see nowadays we have this small videos called reels one reel can influence your life <laughs> one reel can create a havoc in the society isn't it just by saying something or showing something for half a minute people can influence the society now we tend to assume that without verification isn't it so we'll talk more about it as we go along so it is innate and different from acceptance or conditioning basic human aspiration is continuity of happiness and prosperity the correct priority is here right understanding relationship and physical facility and we are able to see that happiness is harmony is something that we talked yesterday also and prosperity the feeling of of having or producing more than required so just try to make out this is an important issue and we'll touch upon this again in which with three as we go along uh, so am i able to make out how much i require in terms of physical facility today and for the rest of life how many of us have been able to make out how much i require in terms of physical facility for the rest of life can you raise your hands this is important why i am asking this because this occupies your imagination most of the time isn't it particularly when we are in a private job and we have some you know, insecurity about job and then there are multiple other other issues associated so you'll see that we feel motivated to understand and live as per the discussion here but we get engrossed with certain things you know, and it keeps occupying our imagination so an important task is to make out the need for physical facility and that is presently left to you how will you make out in terms of money in terms of facilities in terms of currency what will you do that is up to you how will you do that is again up to you but one important task is to be able to make out how much i require and for that how much i have to work to produce 
unless you do that you know you will not be having your imagination free of one kind of enslavement now all the time you are thinking about that isn't it and then we keep on saying that yes i am not able to see the transformation in me i am not able to find out you know the development in me but what is happening innately is that i am not able to free myself of that particular imagination because i am not resolved on that particular issue so we have to make a definite program for prosperity and you know? and then take it as a homework that i have to chalk it out i have to work it out for myself whatever be my age today and if i assume my whole life to be of this much span then how am i going to go ahead how am i going to ensure prosperity what all issues occur to me and then we we'll see that multiple issues might be where you are not resolved like the marriage of your children how much will i have to spend how do i know health of my body how much will i have to spend my own house how much i will have to spend isn't it education of my children how much i will have to spend there are so many things occupying your imagination we keep on keeping them aside or we keep on getting ourselves involved and we are not aware that i have spent so much of time in a day thinking about such an issue which could be resolved much earlier isn't it so if time permits we'll discuss that sometime so find it out because this is very important thing then the basic guidelines as we said yesterday are very important whenever i get some proposal first of all i'll try to verify it on the basis of basic guidelines whether this content can be universal or not whether it is rational or not or am i assuming something and you know, i taking it for granted you know whether i can verify at the level of natural acceptance or not whether i can live accordingly or not whether this will lead to harmony at all levels or not isn't it so i may get something from a tradition i may get something from western way of thinking i may get something from the books some motivational speaker whatever but when these basic guidelines are not obeyed then i can be sure that this cannot be the way to ensure harmony in my life isn't it then right understanding in the human being we talk about self and body the three sources of imagination and the responsibility of the self towards the body then we talked about the feeling of trust respect gratitude is one thing that we did not talk yesterday this is also very important feeling you know so uh, umesh bhaiya will be giving one exercise on gratitude also so do we feel grateful to all those who have done something for our excellence isn't it if i feel grateful then only that gratitude will percolate in my children also if i don't feel grateful to my parents how will my children feel grateful to me if i don't feel grateful to my colleagues you know my neighbors my society then how will my children feel grateful and at some point of time we are able to see the exact difference if the children are not grateful to us what happens to the relations within the family isn't it if i do not feel grateful to my spouse then what happens to the relation in the husband wife relationship isn't it then excellence versus competition so like one key takeaway that bhaiya uh, sunil bhaiya mentioned yesterday that we are able to see naturally that the other is similar to me now unknowingly this current system of education has trained us to be special i am somewhat special in terms of post in terms of physical features in terms of something or the other and i am somewhat special and that is a big burden on us we are working so much to be special while we have to be natural isn't it so excellence versus you know competition then love uh, which are which infatuation infatuation leading to under society then socially responsible behavior then common human goals then with the nature we are able to see the four orders this is very important also because we keep on talking about sustainability recently i heard that probably iit madras has opened a separate department on sustainability and they are going to be taking sustainability but unless we are about clear about the nature <laughs> whatever we do we try to minimize something and then maximize something else we have been trying to minimize pollution but adding to the number of vehicles adding to the span of roads isn't it so how will that sustainability ever be achieved then we keep on consuming and then we keep on talking about sustainability so most of the time we we'll see that uh, like the talk on you know uh, this sustainable development goals and sustainability are taking places we are lot of energy consumption is taking place you know <laughs> and we are talking about sustainability then some more than some nature and space we'll talk in detail about this so i'll not go about it then ethical human conduct uh, like we talked about the values policy and character so we need to look at the two models of human conduct we'll again have a look at this professional ethics will also come in picture so this part that 
the basic human aspiration is continuity of happiness and prosperity and now we are able to see that it is continuity of happiness prosperity the feeling of prosperity is a part of it and this is fulfilled by human consciousness by ensuring all the three right understanding relations between physical facility and this transformation is the basic purpose of education and living with human consciousness provides the base for ensuring justice and order now we keep on talking about injustice in the society or sir, disorder sir, in the society previous slides sir no no that diagram block diagram acha that is the next slide i'll come to that uh, understanding in the self i think i have asked this before also right understanding in the self in the self means about the self that is a meaning right understanding about the self about the whole existence in the self not about the self only about the whole existence yeah so the content of right understanding is the entire actually existence. self includes everything no But when we say right understanding we are saying uh, we are considering everything till existence yeah but the self does not include the whole existence the self is one conscious entity in the entire existence which covers or the entire existence no we are not saying that so if you look at the existence space is there and submerged in space is the nature nature is collection of units and there are two kinds of units material and consciousness so i am one unit of consciousness so if i look at myself i am a conscious unit and i want to understand every other self every other entity in nature space also and thus the whole existence so the right understanding of the entire existence in the self for example i want to understand every human being now every human being is not within me every human being is a part of nature i want to understand every other human being within me the understanding is going to be ensured in me so right understanding in the self of the entire existence is that clear similarly relationship with human being so these are three basic requirements to be fulfilled to ensure a happy and prosperous life in continuity and we can see that if we are able to ensure mutual happiness in every relationship and mutual prosperity in every interaction with the nature what else do we require just this has to be expanded isn't it so this is also a doable exercise we can take multiple exercises and case studies over this am i able to ensure mutual happiness in every relationship or do i have to make somebody unhappy to make somebody happy now if you look at the issues in life you, know, <laughs> you see that if i have to make somebody happy i have to make somebody unhappy also now how can this be possible in every relationship isn't it and we can't skip these issues so what would be the basic program to ensure mutual happiness husband and wife are in the same room somebody wants the ac at 18 degree somebody wants the ac at 24 degree <laughs> how will the mutual happiness be ensured <laughs> ji <laughs> pardon <laughs> average to do so both are unhappy <laughs> both are unhappy and then we say that i have to sacrifice and if i have to keep my spouse happy then i have to sacrifice so then we come with a conclusion that if i have to live in relationship i have to sacrifice it means all the time i feel that if i am responsible in relationship i have to sacrifice i have to give up i have to you know be subservient to the other i have to somehow adjust uh, compromise and these have become common preconditionings for the sake of children for the sake of children for the sake of spouse for the sake of society for the sake of in laws for the sake of system so where are we then we keep on talking about mutual happiness but where is it so is it something only to be talked about or something to be validated how do i do that so if you make this also an issue you will see there is a lot to explore what does mutual happiness mean does it mean fulfilling the desires of the other does it mean fulfilling the preconditioning of the other or something else and then we will try to boil down this whole issue to the understanding of happiness that essentially happiness to be ensured by right understanding right feeling so mutual happiness means ensuring right understanding right feeling on either side so it's not the temperature which is going to make me happy it's not the comfort that is going to make me happy it is the understanding in me 
So with the spouse also, with the children also, with every other human being, I have to make the same program. Similarly, mutual prosperity. We are consuming, we are sitting here in the you know, building, we are using air conditioning here, right? Now, am I working for mutual prosperity? How do I do that? Here again, we'll see there's a lot to explore. So if you look at this particular diagram and start exploring into mutual happiness and mutual prosperity, all the policies and all the you know, programs will come into picture at a personal level, at a family level, a societal level. So there is a lot to explore. And as we go along in UHV 3 and UHV 4, you will see that we ultimately work for this, but we are detailing upon the whole thing. So this transformation is essentially my development. And the role of education is to ensure this development, this transformation. Now presently we can see that the education has become largely focused upon physical facility while we need to ensure this. So we have to work for right understanding in the self, right feeling in relationship and we have to recognize the required physical facility and also how to fulfill it with the rest of nature. Oh yeah. yeah. So this uh, mutual prosperity, so is it not should start from top to bottom, like it is starting from bottom to top? And how can I expect, uh, my estimation is at least only one person may think about uh, mutual prosperity. In general, majority wants to accumulate, including myself. I am not uh, including myself. But now, uh, little bit I am thinking, because I am attending UHV 1, 2 and 3, I am thinking that, yes, this is ne not needed. I had six watches, just example. I had six watches, three I gave to uh, another person. Now, still three is there. Now, I don't put watch. I thought, okay, I'll use mobile. Uh, so this mutual prosperity, it is working for some time, sir. But at all levels, at all people, all the self, will it work out? Now, if you look at just the question, now according to who is on the top? Human being. Pardon? It's the self, sir, human beings. Yeah, so you are saying, no, we are going from bottom to top, we should start from top to bottom. Yes. So who is on the top? Top people, all the... Uh, you talk to them and they will tell you who are on the top. <laughs> <laughs> the ministers say that we have to do so many things because the public wants it. No, they only come in AC car. I don't go in AC car. <laughs> they only take our tax. One month tax goes 11 and months, if you talk months. to your child, he feels that your father, <laughs> you are on the top in the family. You know, his father is on the top. So okay. every person feels that somebody else is on the top and why should I work for that? Now, if you see, we all are related. Now, for your students, you are on the top. For you, the HOD is on the top. For HOD, the director is on the top. For directors, chairman is on the top. Or VC is on the This kind of thing is there. Now, he may say that some politician is on the top. Politician said the janta is on the top. Right? <laughs> they are making us do so many things. So, we have to start from oneself. And we are related you know, to all. Because one thing concerns me many times, sir. A politician uh, who is not educated, who has not written any exam, he enjoys all the benefits, all mutual prosperity. I think everybody will agree with me. <laughs> he will come in a Fortuner car. I think it is 25 to 30 lakhs. So, I told you, no, who made him the minister? <laughs> <laughs> <He is enjoying. laughs> who gave him these facilities? Yes. Now, if you extend this, then we are able to see that right understanding essentially means understanding the harmony at every level from individual to the entire existence, isn't it? And in UHV 3, we are particularly going to talk about self and submergence in detail. You know? And then we will see how this whole thing gets included. Now when you talk about justice, that is mutual happiness, we have to start from the family and then we have to see the whole world as a family. And we will see that the more I am able to contemplate upon the feelings in relationship, the more I am able to contemplate upon the feelings in relationship, I am able to see people outside this close family also as my family members, isn't it? Like when we come here, we are able to see the relationship with so many people. Now just see, when people come to the workshop, let's say they face-to-face -face workshop for the first time, on day one how people interact, what they are watching, they are watching the clothes of other, designation of the other, and as <laughs> And the moment they start exploring into these issues, these all things simply you know, <laughs> evaporate. <laughs> now they are talking as relatives. And you will just see that our clothing gets transformed <laughs> in days to come. <laughs>
isn't it? Our way of speaking, our way of introducing oneself, all those things start getting transformed. So our sense of relationship grows. For personal transformation, that is the transformation within the self, and that is gradually leading to societal transformation. And I was mentioning yesterday that if we plan that we have to you know, multiply 10 times in 10 years, so we have to grow by 26% every year. <laughs> so this team has to expand like this, isn't it? So that we can include all the 1000 crore people in our family. Now for that, we have to work for transformation in the self. And this is something that we'll detail upon. You know? Now we are going to spend uh, two or three days talking about this diagram. There may be so many issues. Somehow it is now getting flipped. Okay. So here we can see how we have gone wrong you know, by not recognizing the common human goals at a personal level, at the level of family, at the level of society, at the level of nature, isn't it? How much wealth is being destroyed for domination, exploitation, fear? Now earlier we might have a thought of accumulating by all means for my family, exploiting the society. Now we are able to think about the society. And we might be doing earlier research for mastery and exploitation over nature, but now we are able to see our relationship with the nature. So, in our vision also, this transformation is taking place and this is something that can be there at the level of institution also. Now, in every institution, we have some vision and mission, isn't it? Does the vision of the institution match with the common human goal? If you look at the vision of institution, it is to become number one in something or the other, you know, in terms of research, in terms of something. Can we have the vision to have a humane society by working for education? Unless our vision is in coherence with the common human goal, you know, then we are conflicting, we are you know, struggling for competition. So we have to see at the level of institution what we can do. In fact, when we go to plan for nodal center, regional center, then we have to also work on the vision and mission of the institution, isn't it? Is it in sync with the common human goal or not? So, Transformation at the level of self by development of the higher level activities. There is also transformation taking place in the society. Now, when we do not have a definite program to develop the self, then somehow we are working for inhuman goals. And that is again you know, proliferating in so many human beings and a kind of chain reaction starts. But when we have this process, at least in one human being, then he or she becomes a pillar of human society. And then in the human society, we have programs for education, health, sanskar, and by virtue of which we are able to develop so many human beings with right understanding, right feeling. So this is the coveted state. You know, and then it can form a human tradition. So this I means the, you know, like one on one end, we have to work for this. And F is where we have to reach. So we can say that at a personal level, this is the initial state from where the transformation is going to start in the society and the final outcome is universal human order and human tradition. So this kind of transformation is desired. The diagram that we had seen yesterday can be put up in this form also. So within me, I can see that there is a dimension of realization that is block B1. There is a dimension of thought that is block B2. So dimension of thought is the imagination part. Dimension of realization is the right understanding part. Now, this block B2 motivates our behavior and work. So in behavior with human being, the desired outcome is mutual happiness. In work, the desired outcome, mutual prosperity, mutual enrichment. Now, what we are doing here, if you see, we are sharing some proposal. And this proposal is coming from outside to you. This proposal has come from outside to me also. Now, what we are doing here, first of all, we are analyzing the proposal. So, to begin with, I am listening to the proposal in detail so that I can grasp the proposal. It becomes a part of my imagination. Then I am analyzing the proposal. I am also imaging 
my life, my family, my society, my role in nature with the proposal. So I am initially working at the level of thought and then I am also verifying within whether this is what is acceptable to me naturally. So what we are trying to do here, we are referring it to the dimension of realization. That is my natural acceptance. So every time I try to verify the proposal, I try to awaken block B1. So at the level of self, what is essentially required to be done? Awakening of block B1. In very precise terms, I have to awaken the activities of contemplation, understanding and realization. And this is what we are here for, isn't it? At the core, that development has to take place. And then, whether I am doing the right thing or not, I try to validate in my living. So, you will see that when I go to validate in my living, it does occur to me many times that I have not understood. I had only thought about it. So many times you will see that when we listen to the proposal and we are able to analyze, it appears that I have understood, I have seen the reality. Many times in the morning session also you have to see, we have to say that when you are using the word see, be very particular. Are you able to see the self and body or this proposal is clear to you? Are you able to see that the intention of the other is pure or this proposal has become clear to you? If the proposal has become clear to you, it is only at the dimension of thought. If you are able to contemplate upon it, if you are able to see it, as it is, as a pure observer, then this is awakened. So, on one hand, we are referring the proposal to the dimension of realization, that is my natural acceptance. On the other hand, I am validating. And with that, I get resolved here. Resolution is one word that we will introduce today. I get resolved here. You know, that how this proposal is going to make my life happy in continuity. Isn't it? In all my interactions with myself, with my relatives, with the rest of nature, how it is going to resolve myself. I become more and more clear. So, we will keep on referring to the diagram also. So, this was all as a you know, recapitulation of UHV 2. So, I will stop here. Okay.